Hey everybody, this is Chris Russo. Just want to thank you for joining us here for video number one in our five-part series, Understanding Medicare at 65. If you're turning 65 sometime in the next year, this video series is mainly for you. However, if you're already on Medicare, you can use any of these videos or just all of them together as a great refresher in learning what the different parts of Medicare are, what they cover, what different types of supplemental insurances are out there, and really how to go about picking the best one that fits your particular budget and healthcare needs. So if you're turning 65 sometime in the next year, especially if you're getting close to that 65th birthday, most likely you've been getting a lot of phone calls, lots of stuff in the mail, or even lots of emails about Medicare related things, how Medicare works, what different types of supplemental plans that are out there. Everybody seems to want to get a hold of you to, to sell you something or to get you to sign up with their insurance. But this video series is really going to walk you through exactly what you need to know about Medicare and the sign-up process, what types of supplemental insurances are out there, and how to pick one that fits best in your situation. In the rest of video one, we're going to dive a bit deeper into the actual Medicare sign-up process, show you the different ways that you can sign up for Medicare, as well as uh, if you even need to sign up for Medicare. Uh, some of you might be in that situation if you're still working or uh, along those lines. In video two, we're going to talk about the main parts of Medicare, part A and B specifically, and then I'm going to touch on what part C and D of Medicare are. Starting in video three, we're going to dive deeper into the different supplemental insurances. Video three, we're going to specifically talk about Medigap plans, which are, which are also known as Medicare supplement plans. Those are usually paired with standalone prescription plans. Video four, we're going to talk about Medicare Advantage plans and kind of get into some of the differences between those plans and the plans in video three, the Medigap plans. In video five, we're going to tie everything together, just kind of refresh on everything we talked about in the first four videos and really go into how to make your Medicare second, secondary insurance decision, how to pick a plan that fits you best as far as your health care needs and your budget. Okay, so let's dive a bit deeper into the Medicare enrollment process and really figure out what's involved in getting signed up for Medicare. The first question we really need to answer though is do you even need Medicare at 65? So most likely if you're coming up on your 65th birthday, you're going to fall under one of the following groups. First of all, maybe you don't have any insurance at all. For you, it's pretty simple. You're definitely going to need to get Medicare, pick up some type of supplemental insurance. Maybe you're covered under some type of Obamacare plan, some type of individual coverage that you signed up for on your own. You could be covered by yourself. You could be covered with a family member like a spouse. Uh, so in that situation, you're still going to need to get Medicare. You probably will need to get some type of supplemental insurance, and I'll talk about that a little bit further in the next slide. Many of you are going to fall into the situation where you have some type of employer coverage. So you have an employer group health plan because either you're still working, your spouse is still working, or maybe you have employer coverage from a job that either you or your spouse had in the past and you're covered as a retiree. So both of those situations when it comes to employer plans are a little bit different. Whether or not it's based on active employment, again, we'll be diving into those a bit further. And the last situation that you might be in, maybe you have uh, Medicaid benefits through the state, maybe you have VA benefits because you served our country as a veteran in the past, my best advice if you're in those, each of those last three situations, whether you have employer coverage or some type of VA or Medicaid coverage, is really to watch the rest of the series, learn how Medicare works, learn what the associated costs are, and then find out what your options are as far as supplemental coverage through the public marketplace. And that way it'll give you a good idea to figure out whether you can just stay on your current coverage as is, or if you need to sign up for any of the parts of Medicare or sign up for some type of supplemental insurance coverage too. So if you have some type of Obamacare plan and you're turning 65 soon, maybe you want to keep it, maybe you want to stay with it because you're not paying that much for it. The main thing you need to realize is once you're eligible for Medicare, you're no longer eligible for any health premium tax credits. If you're not quite sure what those are, I'll give you an example. So let's say you're paying $100, $100 a month for your plan and you want to keep it. Your plan probably doesn't cost $100 a month, but it might cost $800 a month. The thing is, you're getting $700 a month in tax credits because of where your income is. 
you're applying those $700 a month of tax credits toward your plan, and instead of paying $800 a month, you're only paying $100 a month. Well, coming up on your 65th birthday, you're no longer eligible for those health premium tax credits. So if you didn't sign up for Medicare, if you stayed with your plan, come tax time next year, you would have to pay all that money back after your uh, Medicare start date and uh, you'd owe all that money back uh, when it's time to file your taxes for the next year. And not only would you be stuck with potentially thousands of dollars in uh, taxes that you'd owe, but you could be stuck with some type of a Medicare enrollment period where you wouldn't be able to sign up right away, and that would be delayed along with having late enrollment penalties for signing up for Medicare. So if you have an Obamacare plan, you should be getting off of that and getting onto Medicare. If you're still covered by an employer group health plan because either you're still working or your spouse is still working, there's several things that you need to think about and consider when making your Medicare decision. So because there's so much that goes into this decision, I've put a link below this video uh, as well as I'll link to it again at the end of the video. It's a link to an article that I wrote along with a video that I made of all the things that you're going to need to consider uh, when you're making your Medicare decision. It's going to go into several examples that hopefully one of them will kind of resemble your specific situation that will help you figure out what you need to do about Medicare and supplemental insurance. Uh, at worst, if you make the wrong decision, you could be stuck with lifetime penalties. And at best, you could either be overinsured or possibly underinsured and leave yourself exposed to uh, some type of uh, additional cost that you might not need to have to pay if you do the right thing when it comes to signing up for one or more of the parts of Medicare. And if you're covered by some type of employer coverage because uh, you've had it since retirement or maybe you've had that health insurance since your spouse retired, uh, first of all, you're in the minority. A lot of employers have done away with any retiree health coverage. Those of them that have kept it have seemed to, it's, it's there because it, it's meant to bridge the gap between the time you retire and the time you're eligible to start Medicare. So in almost every situation, you're going to have to sign up for Medicare, specifically Medicare Parts A and B, which we're going to dive into a bit deeper in the next video. Um, most of that coverage, even if you can keep it after 65, really isn't that good. Again, click that link that I've put under this video because that link will dive into not only what you need to do uh, with, with employer coverage if you're still a current employee, but what you need to do about it as a retiree. And situations can be uh, a lot different uh, whether or not you're the retiree or your spouse is the retiree. The coverage can be a lot different at 65 based on uh, what each of you pay. So again, a lot of things to consider. So click that link, check out that situation to see what's going to be the best thing for you to do. But again, just watch the rest of this video series. Get an idea for what Medicare covers, what the supplemental insurances cover, um, what is really going to be out there so you can compare it to your employer coverage to make really that best decision in your situation. So if you figured out you do need to sign up for Medicare at 65, the first thing to let you know is that if you're drawing any type of Social Security income, you're going to be automatically signed up for Medicare. So you don't specifically need to sign up for Medicare. Your Medicare start date is going to be on the first day of the month you turn 65. So if, you, if your birthday is July 17th, your Medicare start date will be July 1st. If your birthday happens to be on the first day of the month, for example, if your birthday was on July 1st, your Medicare start date would actually be the month before. So it would be June 1st in that example. And your Medicare card comes in the mail automatically about three to three and a half months before your start date. So uh, yeah, if your birthday was July 17th, Medicare is going to start July 1st and you should look for your Medicare card in the mail starting sometime in mid to late March. However, if you're not drawing Social Security, there's three ways that you can get signed up for Medicare. The first way is going to be the quickest and easiest way to do it. You can do it right online. Either go to the Social Security website or go to the Medicare website. I've put links for those below the video as well. And uh, let's just watch a quick uh, video on how to get that process started. All right, so I just want to show you how to get started with uh, the Medicare application online. So here we're just at Medicare.gov. It's the government's website. Keep in mind from time to time that Medicare and Social Security, they do change their websites. Uh, they might move some things around, change some buttons, locations. But for the most part, you're looking for the same types of things on the page, whether they're going to be in menus along the top or maybe 
in the footer toward the bottom. So here we want to see sign up change plans and then underneath when you hover over it, it says get started with Medicare. I'm going to click that and get started with Medicare. We want to sign up for Medicare through Social Security. It's kind of hard to see here, but this is a link that says sign up for Medicare online. If I hover over it, it gets underlined and now I click it again with my left mouse button. This actually takes us to the Social Security website. Here you can see at the top it's ssa.gov and this is the exact web page, the benefits slash Medicare. So it's taking us directly to the Social Security website. If we scroll down, it just gives us some basic information about Medicare, and we're looking for the Apply for Medicare Only button. Uh, this means that we just are applying for Medicare by itself. You can, I believe, sign up for Medicare and Social Security together, but keep in mind they're separate decisions. You don't have to sign up for Social Security income when you sign up for Medicare and vice versa you don't have to sign up for Medicare when you sign up for Social Security income. So they're really decisions that you could that you should consider separately. But here we're just talking about signing up for Medicare. Click the Apply for Medicare Only button. Takes us to the, uh, the next page. Just gives us a term of service. Basically anything that you go through uh, with an application or electronically, there's always this type of terms of service agreement. We want to check the I understand and agree to the statement above click next. Now we're going to get into the actual application. It breaks it down in a few steps. Talks about getting ready. If you click this link here for number two, gather the information that you need, it'll just give you an idea of the types of information that you're going to need when filling out the application. Also there's a quick little video if you want to watch that to give you some instructions as well. What we want to do is we want to click this start a new application button, but something to keep in mind, and I think it's something they changed a couple years ago, is now you do need a My Social Security account in order to apply for Medicare online. I'm not positive, but I believe that's the case. So we're going to get into the application, and then you're applying for yourself. It's going to ask you if you have a My Social Security account. If you check yes and hit next, it's going to ask you to log in. If you click no, it's now going to ask you if you have an address in the U.S. If you check yes, it's going to take you to that exact same page where it's going to ask you to log in. So this is about as far as I can get in this demo, but just kind of uh, here to get you started. So signing up online is going to be your quickest and easiest way to get signed up for Medicare. It should take you about 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, the next way that you can get signed up for Medicare is simply just to call Social Security However, uh, a lot of times hold times can be an hour or more, so it might be a bit more of a time-consuming process to sign up over the phone. If you want to sign up in person, you want to see somebody face-to-face -face and sit down with a Social Security agent to go through your application and just get it done that way. Uh, keep in mind that I am recording this video during the COVID-19 quarantine, kind of the lockdown, so most, if not all, of those local Social Security offices are closed. So if you want to go in and do it in person, just make sure to check your with your local office and make sure they're still open. So that'll do it for video number one here in our five-part series, Understanding Medicare at 65. If you have any questions or comments about Medicare or specifically anything we reviewed in this video, go ahead and leave those under the video and I'll get to those just as soon as I can. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit that like button or subscribe button. It not only helps me grow my channel, but it'll give you a better chance of being notified quicker once I release the videos later in this series or any Medicare related videos in the future. So thanks again for joining us for video one and stay tuned for video number two, where we dive a bit deeper into the main parts of Medicare. So thanks again for being here and take care.